Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to the Garden Report. Assessing Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown's play in the 109-103 loss against the Heat yeah, here. About that time. 13 turnovers, most ever between them, according to ESPN, in one game. Sloppiness, the theme of this game for the Celtics, who had multiple opportunities, as we talked about in our recap on Celtics All Access, to come back. And in the end, 23 t turnovers cost them that. Ugh. That's the story of the game there. Yeah. And the most turnovers by a playoff team since 2020 in the bubble. I believe it was the Lakers who did that against the Nuggets. The champs? Oh, so has got a chance here. Though. All right. They're fine, they're fine. All right, so it's going to come down to these two, setting a tone. Things that stuck out to me most after the game, Ime saying complaining costs them, uh, not trusting teammates playing in the crowd. You hear that a lot with this team, and, of course, the turnovers. These bad habits with this team, I feel like they do a really good job covering them up, particularly the Stars. Brown and Tatum have come a long way this year, but you still see a pop-up, whether it's Brown getting stuck in the game, over, in the lane over driving, or Tatum just with one of these poor, inefficient shooting nights, complaining in the backcourt, yeah. and not getting back on defense, and just all the little things that frustrate us about this team that they've done a good job addressing overall this year, but in the bad losses like this one, pop up in a big way. I feel like that always goes a long way for the Celtics team, right? Like uh, Tatum's demeanor, Tatum's They're the tone setters. game. Yeah, well, absolutely. But I feel like it's for Tatum, it's it's, it's a little it weighs more, right, for for his teammates. And I feel like that was the story in this one in that second half especially because Jalen was still going Jalen was still picking his spots but it was just like every like every other time he was giving you a big shot he was turning the ball over as well and whether that was on his own or whether that was you know a, a testament to the Miami's defense it just it, it never led to the Celtics trying to find that offensive rhythm that they needed but again that a lot of that starts with Jason Tatum now we've seen Tatum before struggle where he's not able to score as much but he finds other ways to be productive we didn't see that in this one I felt like wasn't the playmaker we've seen throughout this postseason, especially in those Milwaukee Bucks games where some of those games he would end up having like two, or maybe not two, but he'd have like six or eight points at halftime but still finish with 25 plus. You know, he would find his way. Find his rhythm. And I felt like in this one he was a bit, uh, he was taking the easy way with some of those shot selections. You know, I felt like he wasn't fighting to get those looks or at least fighting to get to get to the rim. Uh, what did he go? Two for, or one for one for seven from three. Uh, he took, took 14 shots total. Uh, I just felt like maybe... I feel like after he came back, honestly, after the injury, it was just, it, it was, it hurt the Celtics. And it I, did. I felt that. And I don't think that he may made a bad decision to put him out there, but I just felt like he just didn't give the team something when they really needed anything from him at that point. Yeah. Gets the ball, turns it right over. Brown turns it over after right. the Celtics pulled within one. Yeah. Every time they rallied, it felt like a turnover, particularly from those two, derailed it. And we went back and forth a little bit on post game. Overall, I look at his postseason when it comes to Tatum and say he's been picked up a little bit. Now, he has picked them up in big spots, too, none bigger than game six against the Bucks. But now we're talking about game one in this series where he squandered the game essentially in the third quarter of that one, turned the ball over, put it on his shoulders, did it again here tonight. Yeah. So that's two losses in this series, largely stemming from your star when other guys were – playing decent, particularly Brown, who had every two-pointer he took in this game. So I thought Brown's aggression was appropriate, especially going down big. Turnover's understandable. You'll take some of those while he's scoring 40. But Tatum, as you talked about, just didn't do enough otherwise. And now we're in this long string with him, I feel like, where it's one good game, one bad game, and the team is sort of flowing with what he's doing. And consistency out of your star, I feel like, is important. You know, a lot of teams lose playoff games. There's going to be gives and takes in series. But just these dramatic swings from him, and they have been dramatic, are really tough to roll with if you're trying to win a championship. Yeah, it is. It is, especially because this team really does lean on, on, on Tatum. I mean, look, if you, again, I, I talked about during the Southwest Post Game Show where in, in that series against the Milwaukee Bucks, okay, sure, he didn't have a great game. You know, he didn't play great every single game throughout that series. But when it mattered most, he showed up. And without that, I don't think they're at this level. I don't think they make the Eastern Conference Finals without him. So, I mean, of course, it's, it's stating the obvious when you're, when he's your best player. But, again, we've talked about it go, going into this playoffs. When you don't have as, as, as deep as a bench as Miami, when you don't have guys that you can that, that can put the ball on the floor and produce outside of Tatum and Brown, it gets, it gets tricky. And the Celtics have to continue to lean on that defense to string together stops. That's going to trigger the offense. And I feel like the Celtics, uh, the Miami Heat, they were able to not only force the Celtics into turnovers, but they were also able to convert on the offensive end off of those in a hurry. And the Celtics have to 
go back, look at film, figure out what they did wrong, and they have to be more crisp on offense. They cannot turn the ball over this much. And of course, those two guys in particular just make things way, make things a lot harder for the Celtics team when they're playing this way. I expect Jason Tatum to bounce back in game four. I'm not worried about that. But again, this team as a whole, they have to revert back to the defense that they were playing. And Marcus and Al have a big part in that. So how Marcus responds is going to be interesting. You know, how his body responds, rather, will be interesting. But other guys, this is a group effort on defense. You know, guys off the bench, guys like Derek White, you know, guys like Grant Williams. I'm not saying Grant has to go out here and put out a 20-plus point performance like he did in Game 7, but he has to be consistent. He has to be solid on both ends, but specifically on the defense. The Celtics cannot come out flat, especially in the first quarter. They can't score 14, 16 points in the first quarter where it felt like it happened here in Game 3. And on defense, it, it just I want to see this team just string together stops. I felt like they just haven't been that same defensive team that we saw against the Bucks. Yeah, when you have slip-ups like this, it makes it harder. It really does. Round one, they won in spite of some lapses, and they got themselves a nice break going into round two with the sweep. Yes. Round two, they made it harder on themselves by blowing game five, and Tatum was a big part of that fourth quarter collapse in that game. He responds, but it's just another game, another <laughs> round of wear and tear for, honestly, a team that's starting to get banged up a little bit here. You do wonder how smart is just going to continue to persist through whether it's the quad or right. you know, the ankle now and just all these different bumps and bruises that he's picking up there and it's tough on because again Miami's deeper they have a deeper team you know especially and, with Lowry back and now Rob out. right exactly but look deeper doesn't always mean better like I I still think the Celtics are overall are more talented than Miami Heat but when it comes closer now it's much closer when you look at the injuries and all that stuff but at the end of the day it's tough when you're going up against a team that just will never stop fighting and that's the Miami Heat right now. So you have to do your, you have to, you have to match that energy, and then some in Game Four, and head back to Miami, hoping, you know, having this series tied up two-two. Pretty simple assessment. Need a better Jason Tatum out of this one. Celtics gonna try to bounce back, and you know, on Monday night in Game Four here back in Boston, they are undefeated after they lost this season. But this one felt a little more damaging with yeah. the turnovers and everything else that went on here, especially injuries too, entering this game. Uh, we'll have practice coverage tomorrow. Celtics around 1 o'clock at our back center. We'll look out for some live reports there. Celtics all access. CLNS Media on YouTube. Of course, CLNSmedia.com. Check out com. Com.com slash garden. 40% off a premium subscription. Go help out CLNS and get yourself some good wellness resources over at Com that are going to help right. you sleep and everything else. And then, of course, HelloFresh, HelloFresh.com slash Playoff16, 16 free meals, three free gifts. It's an amazing offer. It's still there for you to take it and just try it out because I think you're going to be amazed. We've been instructions, prepackaged ingredients. Should take you less than an hour, I think, to throw together some of those Definitely. meals. And there are quicker options over there, too, so check that out. Josue Pavon, Buddy Manning, Game 3, a 109-103 loss for the Celtics. We'll see you tomorrow.